What's up weirdos? My name is Felicia and I like scary movies and today we're talking about Brightburn. Yes, yes, the superhero horror movie that is probably old news by now, but I finally saw it and I want to talk about it. This film follows a family who finds a baby in the woods that has crashed down from somewhere in a spaceship. This baby grows up with some Clark Kent style powers, but instead of using them for good, he uses them for evil. <laughs> So if you didn't know, this movie is a gun family affair. James Gunn, who's the dude that did Guardians of the Galaxy, is the producer. His siblings, Brian and Mark Gunn, are the writers. And their friend, David Yarvesky, is the director. Now, this isn't a movie I personally rushed to the theaters to see because, one, I'm not a huge fan of sci-fi horror. And second of all, I'm not, like, super obsessed with superheroes. Um, so I just wasn't sure if it was going to be the movie for me. I'll tell you straight up that when I got into the theater, I sat down with Lauren, my BFF, who you seen on this channel before. We're sitting there, we're having a good time. The movie starts. The first 20 minutes, I was like, oh no. Literally one of the first shots of the movie is like a camera panning across a bookshelf that has like fertility books and like how to get pregnant books and like very just like on the nose as you hear them talking about like, oh, it's gonna work this time, baby. We're gonna have a child. And then they showed them like about to have sex. And I was like, okay, we get it. They wanna have a baby. It just felt like immediately they were going to over explain everything to me. And I really don't like that in horror movies. And so I was very worried 20 minutes in. But then by the end, there were some things I liked. So let's talk about this first. First of all, the gore. There was way more gore than I ever could have expected in this movie, um, and I really appreciated it. I was like, oh wow, they really went there, they really utilized their R rating uh, with some crazy gore moments. I'll tell you my favorites in the spoiler section. I also in general really liked the imagery of the film. I loved Brandon's costume he makes for himself. I think it's very cool looking. His mask was very cool and DIY. And then I also like the symbol he creates for himself and all the all the drawings in his notebook. Like all that stuff that was like creating his idea of his superhero thing. Like very, very cool. Liked it. I also like that the parents of this movie weren't as dumb as I thought they'd be. And let me unpack that. I feel like in so many horror movies, whenever there's a child that has like some sort of special ability, the parents are just like, whoa, what? And in this movie, they're like, something's wrong with him. Like clearly something's wrong with him. There was one scene in particular where like Brandon comes in from doing something, I won't say what, and he gives his parents this big lie and the parents are like, oh, okay, okay. And then Brandon goes upstairs and the parents are just like, he lied to us. They start freaking out in such a realistic way that made so much sense for me versus playing the like oblivious parents and focusing so much on the kid. This movie really focuses a lot more on the parents and it makes for a much more like realistic understanding of this kind of crazy movie. Okay, and now the things I didn't like. The red trap door. I like, this is specific, but it comes up a lot in the movie and there is this red trap, there's this trap door where this red light is coming through it and it's like, ooh, angry door, like shaking and red blinking light. It is the most cheap haunted house thing I have ever seen in a movie. I could not believe it. I was like, this is... This, this, this was your budget? I just don't understand when I see things like that that nobody was like, oh, that doesn't look good, so let's not show it a million times. Versus in this movie, they just showed it a million times, and every time I was like... And there were also just certain things in the movie I just couldn't buy. Like, I just... I couldn't buy into it, and I suspend my disbelief hardcore for horror movies. I am never questioning things. But for this, it was like, you have this kid. He has, like, super speed, right? Yet people are able to run away from him at a normal pace and, like try to trick him and these things that I'm just like, he would have gotten you. There is no way he wouldn't have gotten to you before you had all these ideas. Like everything is like, time is like slowed down in this, in this way that doesn't make sense for the character of Brandon. I also thought the movie was just very predictable in a lot of ways. I wasn't surprised by much except for the gore. And I guess one of my biggest complaints about the whole thing is there was no internal struggle. We didn't see Brandon go through any sort of struggle to decide whether he was gonna be good or bad. It was just like, I'm living my life, this thing happened, I'm bad, and I have no feelings about it. And like, I understand that there is some otherworldly things going on inside of him, but the movie, I feel like, would have been elevated so much by having 
the character of Brandon have to go through a human struggle to decide whether he wants to go one way or the other. And for me, this movie was just like, boom, we're dealing with an evil kid. And I was like, <sighs> but like, he loves his mom. And you see that, you see bits of that in the movie. You're like, okay, he loves his mom. But we don't get an actual look at any of his internal struggle. And I just thought that could have helped. Oh yes. Actors. Okay, so for the actors, I really liked the guy that played the dad, David Denman. I thought he had a great vulnerability to him. He had a very like well-rounded character of the father figure that was not like every other father figure I've seen before. It was very good. Well, Elizabeth Banks also did a lovely job. And Jackson Dunn, I thought he did well. Uh, once again, I think if his character had been written with a little more depth to him, um, the kid actually could have done better. Um, but we we're looking at a sort of a one-dimensional dude here so I think the kid did a good job for that also while we're in the theater Lauren just like leans over and whispers like is that the guy from Breaking Bad and I was like <gasps> and it was so Matt Jones who plays Badger in Breaking Bad plays a character in this movie um, who gets quite the arc I guess I'll say, I don't know how to say anything without giving it away, uh, but he has some fun stuff to do in this movie. Okay, now let's get to some ratings and then we'll get to some spoilers. <coughs> the scare for me gets a two. I felt like the movie was so predictable that I didn't have a chance to really be living in fear. Like, yes, there were some good jump scares, there were some good, like, big, loud sound effects, but overall, I just didn't feel like it was very scary. The gore gets a four. There was, like I said, way more gore than I could have imagined. The cheese gets a three, and not in a good way. The cheese for me just came from sort of a, I don't wanna say a thrown together script, but a script that I feel like lacked depth. And overall, this movie gets a three for me. I'm glad I didn't break my back trying to get to the theater to see it. I do think it was a fun movie to watch. Um, I think it's definitely worth watching once, but it's not a movie I feel like I'm going to go back to again and again. And it's not one that I would say, uh, run to the theater right now before it's out. Like, I'm just like, it's fine. Okay, now for some spoilers. <laughs> the best death scene hands down for me was Matt Jones. He basically is lifted up in this car and then slams down and his jaw, like, okay, I doubt I'll be able to find a picture on the internet for this video, so I'll just tell you. Basically, the steering wheel, if this is the steering wheel, it goes through his jaw like this and his jaw just totally breaks off. It is nasty it is so gross like literally it's like hanging off oh my god it's so disgusting and amazing what is wrong with me the other best gore moment for me was definitely the eyeball so there's a moment in which a lady has to pull a piece of glass out of her eyeball and it is excruciating and it is disgusting and it is amazing i just I just thought, I just never would have seen that coming in this kind of movie, for sure. And then just a couple things at the end of the movie that I thought were really fun. So they had Michael Ruka come on, that's the guy that plays this character in Guardians of the Galaxy, and he plays this conspiracy theorist on YouTube, and he's got all these videos about Brandon, who is now, you know, taking over the world, and it's so fun and strange. And then they also used the song Bad Guy by Billie Eilish as the ending credits music, and that was just... Ideal. It was the perfect song for this movie. Well done. And that's it, y'all. I hope you enjoyed this review and have a nice screen. Bye.